We are live. Good morning. I am very tired. I don't know. Today I just woke up and I was not feeling it. I'm also going to try to make venison meatloaf later. I was going to do uh, leftovers today, some venison stew and a little bit of chicken and stuff, but all that meat is ready for me to kind of do something with, so I didn't want to like <laughs> leave it there. I get weird about like bacteria and bad things, you know, taking over, eating up my meat, destroying my life. Both my little kitties, all they do is sleep, recovering from their wee little surgery. All they do is sleep. Good morning, Shay. Uh, venison meatloaf sounds good. It's okay. I mean, it's a little gamey, but beggars can't be choosers. It's all organic red meat, so I will take it, and I will get way used to it. This way, I actually get your message. Yes, yeah, so I wanted people to sign up on my little channel, um, and they did, and then a whole bunch of people left, and I try to not, like, abuse it. Like, I don't just post on there all the time, and people still got annoyed with it. You got to be careful. People get annoyed. They're like, shut the... <laughs> shut up, bitch. Which I get. I understand. All right. Let's 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 get some makeup on. I'd like to feel human today. I have to go out, so I might as well look human. Our weather here is terrible. It is like 50 degrees. It makes me so sad. We've never had it like this in December, like this has been a really abnormally warm, uh, fall and well, not winter yet, but it is never like this. Usually we have like, you know, three feet of snow already. So, uh, yeah, that Amazon, uh, berry mask is the shit. I love it. I love it. I use it all the time. It is so moisturizing. I am a big fan. Very big then. All my eyelashes have fallen out. That's great. I rub my eyes in my sleep. Sometimes I wake myself up doing it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It just feels so good. It's because the air is so dry and it doesn't matter how many humidifiers or eye drops or whatever. It just sucks the whole time. Um, Avon has mass shortages right now. So I have no idea if we have that in stock. Like, I am at the point where I'm as clueless as you are. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Yes, we have far away that we have. Thank God I can share that with you. <laughs> Here we go. Um, one thing that we have going is I think you can order up to December 13th to get it in time for Christmas. I'll say this. I never wait last minute. There's two types of people. The procrastinating procrastinators, like my husband, that wait and wait. I'm like, what are you waiting for? To give everyone a fucking heart attack? Like, for what reason are you waiting and waiting? And, like, why? I just, I don't understand at all. Well, I could just, you know, do it at the last possible minute. I'm like, oh, my gosh. He is something. He's a procrastinator. All right, let's get going. Let's do something to my face. I'm going to start with the uh, a new Hydrofusion Hyaluronic Acid Serum. is very good on my face. I need lots of moisture. Um, I was blessed so much. So I was considering flying home after the holidays, like right around New Year's, to see people because it's cheaper. I had an old flight voucher. Um, from the days of COVID. Now, this flight voucher, usually they don't let you book in another name. But they were like, because of the unprecedented, I, God, I hate this commie language where they like, you know, train everyone to speak the same. It's just insane. Anyway, it basically was like, because it was in the throes of COVID, like the first few months, I can use this voucher on someone else. Well, my husband has a snowshoe expedition coming up. And as much as it pains my heart and I'd like to go home and visit my loved ones, 
times are tough. You know what I mean? So instead of him spending money, that much money, I can use my voucher to cover some of his trip to Maine to do his two hour snowshoe expedition. If it froze, you guys need to refresh. That's what will have to happen. Like you guys will have to take it upon yourselves to refresh the page and then it will work. So I was like, Merry Christmas. I'm going to give you this <laughs> vacation I've been looking forward to. There's two places I was thinking about going. I haven't been to Sh Chi Town since 2020 and I really wanted to see my friend Gretchen Bonaducci in Arizona, but it's not practical if my husband has to go on this two week snowshoe expedition to certify himself. And I'm like, you just have all the fun. Right now I'm using the Hydrofusion gel cream. I need lots of moisture, lots of moisture. So I was like, Merry Christmas. I'm giving you my trip. Hurts a little, but it's the right thing to do because flights are insane. <laughs> And driving across country and putting those kind of miles on your car and stuff. Like, we're getting older. There was a time. You know what I mean? I just feel the older you get, it's just hard on your body. So, his instructor, where he's getting the certification from, the main guide certification, he's almost done. He said that people will drive across country for four or five days. And then have to go on this two-week snowshoe expedition and their backs are all fucked up and they're all tired and they can't do it. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right, right? Um, a new Hydrofusion Depuffing Eye Serum. I'm only going to put this on my lower lids. Or is it lids? That's not lids. Bags. I would like to depuff. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, Gretchen lives in Bisbee, but Bisbee is, like, not Arizona. It is, from the pictures I'm seeing, that shit is, like, West Hollywood. <laughs> it's so weird because it's an old, wild west town, but they're, like, full-blown, like, drag queen reviews and all this stuff, and I'm like, in Bisbee? Like, population 4,000? Like, that's crazy but that is what's going on there a lot of uh la implants and la ideas all going to the tiny little town of bisbee arizona <laughs> it's like that's so wild so apparently a lot of people go there it's beautiful and small but it sounds very um like west hollywood i mean west hollywood's beautiful i mean i don't know now but you know, when I was living there, it was clean and, you know, everything was really, really nice. So it's not an insult when I say West Hollywood. It's just all the activities there, like the drag queen lunch. God, back then that used to be like a big deal. Like there weren't drag queens everywhere. So to go have a burger with some drag queens is like a big deal. <laughs> now everybody's a drag queen everywhere. They're very tired. All they do is sleep. They're so sweet with their little petal hats. They're, they're sleeping right under my feet right now. All right, I'm going to use the new Ultimate right on my top lid. So I only use the depuffing gel, if you will, on my lower lids. This stuff smells good. I love our Hydrofusion line. If you guys haven't tried it, if you just need moisture for winter and you like hyaluronic acid pumping out your uh wrinkles it is definitely the thing to go so i run my facebook on my page so i can see what's going on with my stream it's definitely freezing all the time marcus zuckerberg needs to get his shit together good morning what am i talking about anything everything got to be careful what you're talking about as it heads to 2024 my guess is zuckerberg will be banning all dissent all of it banning not warnings, not jail, banning. So this is not the place to have discussions. X seems to be the place to have discussions. But this is not a free speech platform. This is not a place to have any discussions. Like, you are going to get zapped. They are not playing. <laughs> they want who they want elected, and you ain't going to stop them. Welcome to corruption, my friends. <laughs> Let the rich people tell you how to run things, okay? You just shut up and you do as you're told. All right. 
Let me do a little primer. It gives me a vintage vibe. Reminds me more of a tourist trap. What, Bisbee? Just from the pictures I see, like, it really looks like New York City mindset or West Hollywood mindset, which just shocked me that an old West town would be full of pride events and drag queens. I'm like, there's like five people that live there. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? No offense. But, you know, gay people are less than 5% of the population of Earth. It's not an insult. That's why all the straight people are like, I want to be queer to be special. Look at me. I'm a narcissist. I'm going to pretend I'm all these things so I can be part of your little club because I'm a fucking narcissist and I want to appropriate gay culture. That's what people do. They try to appropriate, appropriate gay culture so they can be special because they're horrific narcissists. Because there's not that many gay people. So they also want to be the special specials. So, if gay culture is that small, right, and then you go to this tiny Wild West town, you would not expect it to be all, like, gay culture. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just all the photos I'm seeing. I'm like, that is not what I expected Bisbee, Arizona to be. It just isn't. And only because there's so very few people there. But I guess only gay people moved there. Which is fine. I'm sure it's really clean. Like West Hollywood. Straight up. I don't know how many like gay communities you've been to. But you know. I'll, I'll tip my hat. They plant flowers. And they make shit look nice. Good morning Brian. It was quirky. Well it is. It is wee ho now. <laughs> it is wee ho. There we go. There we go. So when we move places, right, we're, we're implants here in Montana, but we don't want to try to change anything. We didn't come here to be like, let's liberate it with our progressive ideas. No, 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 no. Because you're destroying the culture of America. So if you're like, I moved to Texas and I brought all my LA ideas and we're going to progressify that, like you're destroying the culture of Texas. You. There's culture, and culture is beautiful. So I came here, and, you know, things are different, but that's as they should be. That is their culture. So I don't try to change shit, because that's fucked up. So I always tell people, if you're going to move somewhere, you acclimate to them. You don't sit there and try to make it like where you lived before. It's a real mix of people. What, Bisbee? It's very small. And the only thing I've seen from it are pride photos and drag queen reviews. So I have an idea of it that it's very Hollywood. <laughs> That's just how I see it. Which is funny because I considered moving there years ago. It was Sierra Vista, Arizona, Prescott, Arizona, or Bisbee. That's where I was looking. All right. Let's do Essential Eyes Palette. Let's do it. Oh, shoot. All my little brushes are in the bathroom. Hold on. I washed them last night. I washed them. Thank God I did. Yeah, it's not time for the fucking duo to eat. Come here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come here, kitty, 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 Hi, baby, and your little thing. Hi, baby. Are you going to fall asleep there? Maybe I'll put you back down. They're just very sleepy after their things. All right, let's get you down here, little Dimmy Gorgon. There we go. Luna is jealous. And what's funny is she can't be bothered with me, usually. She's like, you're not dad, and she just leaves. But then I get cats, and she's like, what about me? It's all about me. I'm like, dude, 
You didn't give a shit if I died not too long ago. And now it's suddenly, oh, what about Luna? Um, we left there fall 1999. Completely changed from when we moved there. It was nearly a ghost right after the mines closed. <sighs> I know she's so sweet. And she looks so silly in her stupid little hat. Her stupid little bit, little hat. Let's see. Brittany Griner is getting a Disney movie. I mean, does anyone care about Disney anymore? I, I would think that their box office is showing you just how little anyone cares about Disney. Doesn't seem like anyone gives a shit that that company exists anymore. Um, let's see. When we were young, we were just weirdos and fine with it. Never ran around saying I'm queer and I'm this and that. It's because they want attention. We live in a culture where everything's dependent on views, likes, and attention. And when someone gets attention for being extreme, everyone's like, oh my God, stunning brave, worship him. Dylan Mulvaney, worship, worship him. And it's like, what the fuck? He hasn't done anything but just make a mockery of everyone. Like everything they say, if you say this about women, you're a misogynist and you're just judging us. And then... This person, who I think is deeply sick, mocks and ridicules ladies and gets paid. <laughs> like that's, and it's, it's just like, look at me, worship me, pay attention to me every second. I'm going to do videos, look at me. It's like, oh my God, I struggle. I have subscribers on here. And I'll be sitting there with Matt. And I'm like, I need to throw them a bone. I need to, I need to, they're awesome. I need to do something for them. So trust me, you're on my mind. I'm like, I just struggle because I'm on camera twice a week. Like my husband, he streams with no camera. He has no social media. Like the incessant need for people to look at you. Just look at me. Look at, it makes me crazy. They're doing well. You just miss me lifting her up, but they're very tired. So I just want them to heal. They're so sweet though. They're just so sweet. But yeah, like we very, we very much are like rejecting this culture of look at me. Like I just, I'm so tired of it. Aren't you? It, you can feel how toxic it is. You can feel it permeating in the air. The toxicity of all these people just wanting you to stare at them. Good morning all about. Um, sorry, I'm reading my little locals chat here. It's just, I don't know, man. There's something really sick in society right now. It is very, very sick. It's very sick. Instead of being individuals, everyone has to be part of a group. Instead of just being, everyone has to declare what they are. And I think it's because no one believes in God or a God or the divine. So they worship themselves. Like, it's Satanism. They don't know it. If you read what Satanism is, like, fuck everyone you want. Uh, everything's about your own pleasure and self-desires. Like, that is what Satanism actually is. So you think, like, Satanic Church and people, like, worshiping the Dark Lord and sacrificing goats. That ain't it. It's what everyone's doing today on social media. That is exactly what Satanism is. People use their kids. And I know some of you moms are like, I follow an influencer that uses her own kids to make money. And she, she opened her vagina and pushed kids out so she could get attention online. And she shows her kids online and she uses her own offspring for fame and likes. And it's like, what are you doing? The internet is so fucking evil. You're putting your kids on there, dude. Are you kidding me? Oh, but I get likes and attention. So I'm like the mom with the most and I do these videos in my kitchen and then I feature my kids and I get all the money. It's like, dude, everyone's lost their fucking minds. They will sacrifice their own children to be famous. I guess we always had stage moms and shit, but it's gotten, it's gotten way worse now. <laughs> it's just so bad. It's so bad. It makes me sick. Because having been a reality TV star, I can tell you first and foremost, I was at my worst then. I was at my worst. I was the worst person. And people are like, oh, you weren't that bad. Trust me when I say, because I have, you know, self-awareness, I focused on all the wrong things. 
every single wrong thing you can think of focusing on, I focused on. Relevancy. You know, I guess back then going viral. Just... I was a rotten person. Which is funny because some people would argue that I'm a rotten person now and I would push back very hard on that. It's funny, like when you start to get better from the sickness of self-worship, basically Satanism, the people who are still sick, worshiping themselves and being, you know, just shallow husks of human beings, they get mad at you. Because they want you to be as awful as they are. Hello and welcome everybody. I'm putting on Avon's Essential Eyes. A quick reminder, if you need any last minute gifts, little hand cream, stocking stuffers, I'm your girl. You can order for me uh, till December 13th and get it in time for Christmas. But why, why wait, you procrastinators? Just do it today. Do it today. And then you won't have to sit there by the skin of your teeth hoping that, you know, the post office doesn't screw that up. Sierra Vista, 1999. Bisbee High School, but decided not to raise her a son in that town. He used to play with a jazz group. Jazz. I liked that. Crazy groups going up and down Main Street. It sounds like it's just become a weirdo. Like Sedona. Okay. I lived in Prescott. Straight up. Let me tell you about Sedona and the crystals and the energies and the drugs and the hippies and the L.A. people. Get the fuck away from me. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was, like, walking down the street. And I had my 357 on my hip. And I was like, and I got a gun. Oh, my God, a white supremacist. She has a gun. I'm like, get the fuck out of Arizona. Are you serious? Are you for real? Like, you go into someone else's culture, Right? And Arizona is like, pew, pew, pew. And then you are going to pretend that you're so fucking special and important that the world should worship at your feet and your ideas because you are above all others. That you should humiliate yourself in public <laughs> wigging out about a gun. Now, let me tell you something very cool about cultures and guns. I was hiking in Glacier National Park. I was with my cousins, who are not very pro-gun, but seeing all the signs like, you will die from grizzlies, don't fuck around, grizzlies everywhere, seeing all the berry bushes and shit, realizing you can see the realization hitting them, like, oh shit, I'm like, yeah, dude, heavy grizzly country, welcome. So I gave them uh, bear mace, and they were like, you know, holding on to it, like, okay, and I was like, you guys can take all the mace, I have the gun, and then I, like, taught them about it. it. It has bear rounds. This is the smallest gun possible that you could shoot a bear with and win with these rounds. Is a 357. I have a six inch barrel. It is my best shot. Nothing, even when I'm distressed, can fucking hide from me with this gun. I am sick. I'm like <laughs> really good with it. So you saw them warm up to the idea very quickly that I had this gun on my hip. And as we were hiking, there's this group of Japanese people. Total language barrier. They were so nice. Like, they looked at me, and, you know, we're taking a break. This is Apgar Mountain. It is hard. So we're just like, Whew. I think we're letting horses pass and stuff. And the Japanese people were, like, talking amongst themselves and looking at the gun. And then... um they were like smiling and kind of bowing at me. So I like turned my hip and I pointed and they're all like, Oh yeah, you're, you're gone. And then I pointed to the bear sign and I asked them where their bear spray was and pointed to my cousin's bear spray. And they're like, we don't have any. I'm like, Oh my gosh. So then I felt better. They were hiking near us. I'm like, Oh my God, really? <laughs> People are fucking dying out here from grizzlies all the time. Like, you might want to bring something with you, okay? Like, you're not going to snow white these motherfuckers. Don't get me started on Sedona. I know, it's so bad. It's so beautiful. Hippies have destroyed Sedona. Destroyed it. It's gorgeous, though. So then I, I kind of was like, oh, wait a minute. You guys want to take a picture? So the girl was like, you know, kind of pointing at me. And I think she was trying to convey that they couldn't believe how tall I was. I was like, oh, 
So in the picture, they wanted me in the middle. And they don't touch. They're very polite. And they're all like leaning towards me. And they wanted me to like put my gun <laughs> front and center in their cool photo. Like they just couldn't believe that this giant woman had this giant gun. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a 357 Magnum. I'm like, it's big. And it's a Ruger. So it might as well be a small tank. Seriously. Like, I could run out of bullets and you're still in trouble if I hit you with that thing. It is for real. But they were just so cute. But that's an example of culture. They don't have guns. However, they respected our culture. They were letting us know how cool it was. Like, wow, a real fucking American. Just how we always dreamt that they're bigger than life and they have this big fucking gun. I need to take a picture with this person. <laughs> Okay, so I take a picture with them, and then the whole time I felt like I had to keep them with an eyesight. One, it didn't look like they brought enough water, and two, I was really worried about them because, I mean, it wasn't just bear country. This was August, so it's huckleberry season. All the raspberry bushes are in bloom. All the huckleberries are in bloom. There's bear scat everywhere, and I'm like, these sweet fucking Japanese people <laughs> have no idea what is going on. Uh, people with a huge number of pictures of themselves on their phones are kind of weird. It's totally weird. It's totally weird. It's totally weird. If you looked at my phone, you would see nothing but my animals. It is animals and beautiful sunsets and clouds. If I posted all the pictures that I take that I like, you guys would be like, damn, girl, like, you're annoying with that. <laughs> I just love it. All right, I'm going to use this this brown right here. I'm going to put it on my inner corners. You'd be like, this chick. But, yeah, I used to be one of those fucking people, dude. I used to be one of those selfie people. Like, for real. And I had people in the business, like, my team was basically like, yeah, it helps with your relevancy, we're getting free press. We don't even need a um, a PR agent anymore. Like, you're just breaking Twitter every time you post some half-naked picture of yourself. And it was true. Like, Howard Stern was talking about me all the time, saying I was his favorite Twitter account to follow because I was a shallow, narcissistic, vain, moron... With a team of people going, yeah, keep doing it. It's making us relevant. Make the money. Like, awful. 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 Trust me. I get anxiety and panic attacks sometimes when I go to sleep at night. When I, like, go over in my mind some of the things that I've done in my life. And I recognize what an awful person I was at that time. And the regret and remorse I feel. And I know I shouldn't. Stoicism would tell you not to do that. Christians would say Jesus has forgiven you. But here's my thing. And I've always felt this way. The get out of jail free Jesus people. That do terrible things. And go, oh God forgives me. I cannot stand them. I'm sorry. It's so disingenuine. It's like God knows your heart. And God knows you're fucking with them. Good luck when you get up there bro. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. So I sit there and I'll just be like, God, you know exactly what I'm thinking about. And I am so sorry. I am so sorry. The shallowness that used to be me and the people I surrounded myself with. Horrible, horrible, narcissistic, shallow, awful people. And it's so funny. Like when I left the industry, I was like, oh... She's changed and she's lost all her friends. Do you know how awful it was to like come to the realization that I was an asshole piece of shit and then look around me and be like, holy shit, everyone I'm surrounded with are asshole pieces of shit. Narcissistic turds that would step on my face to get themselves ahead. Yeah. I know, I know, I know my, my experiences make me who I am. Look, I'm not saying all selfies are bad, uh, Dark Omen. They're not. Not all selfies are bad. I took a picture, was it a few weeks ago? I was outside 
and I looked at the mountain and it was so beautiful. And I'm like, it looks like my hair. <laughs> like, because there was only snow capped peaks, kind of like my streak right there. I'm like, that looks like my hair. So I busted out my phone. I'm standing there with my coffee and I hold it up and I put the mountain peak behind my hair and I'm like, <laughs> it totally looks like my hair. So I posted or I took the photo and I posted it. I was like, look at my fucking Montana mountain hair. It like matches the mountain peaks. Totally. But had you looked in my phone, let's say 2012, 2011, Oh my God. I remember my ex taking pictures of me butt naked, like in the shower, covering certain things. And now in retrospect, looking back and being like, your lover doesn't care about you. If they're like helping you take pictures like that, that, that is not someone who cares at all. I can't imagine going up to my husband now and being like, Hey, you know how we've been hitting the gym really hard and him being like, yeah. You know how you were like, ooh, babe, you're looking tight. Yeah, you want to take a picture of me half naked and I'll just like cover my boobs. Hi, do you want to come? Come on, come on, come on, come on. The like staring at me thing is, it's, come on, you lay down. You lay down. You lay down. I, I can't with it. The neediness when her dad is not around. Oh, God, when he goes on his snowshoe expedition, it's going to be really bad. I'm thinking about doing my cooking stream today to make that venison. I'm just going to make it in a meatloaf. I didn't have, so we had enough venison to make venison stew and everything, but there is one batch of venison that's mostly mush, right? That my husband was like, this is like mush. And I'm like, I can salvage that. I will mix that with like 93% lean beef and I'll, I'll make meatloaf or something with it. So that is what I'm going to go for today. Some meatloaf and some fighters, fighters. See how that goes for us. Um, am I crazy or is no one talking? Am I crazy? Is no one talking in my Facebook chat? I feel, am I, am I nuts? This is the slowest moving chat I've ever seen in my life. Let me see here. Am I crazy? Are y'all just hanging out? Good morning, good morning. Okay. Now you guys are talking, you guys are just listening. I was like, is this broken? Because there's there's a decent amount of people in here, but my locals is going crazy, and y'all are just like, um, he grinded it into mush. Just one little thing. The meat grinder was wrong. He ordered a new attachment, and rather than be like, oh, that meat is gone forever now, I would much prefer to salvage it. So I was like, babe, don't throw that shit away. <laughs> don't do it don't do it I think I'm going to do this brown now because I can salvage it what's this say my hubby heard your voice and said that's my girl <laughs> that's funny that's funny oh, so fun we're watching Edward Scissorhands and you know when she like drives into town with um Edward and all the women start doing their gossiping bullshit. I looked at Matt. I'm like, this is the most accurate depiction of women's cell phones and messengers. Like when you get women into groups, it's unfortunate. This is exactly how they behave. The gossip. I mean, it's bad. <laughs> they cannot help themselves. They have to shit talk, shit pose. It was really funny. Like I had a friend recently. She's being cyber stalked. And I'm like, what's really sad about this is you probably know the person. You once knew them. It might be the like new girlfriend of an ex. You would, you would be shocked. Like I found out who a few of my online stalkers are. Some of them, you know, I just know who they are because it's good. You know, right now they're just trying to, you know, destroy my life and everything. But it's good to know who is doing it. You know what I mean? Just in case 
if anything bad ever happened. Oh, fuck unloading that. You enjoy yourself, Darko. <laughs> if anything bad ever happened, at least, you know, my loved ones have a list of people who would be suspect. But I used to have my own website. Some of you guys might remember that. And people would leave comments on it. Not realizing, like, IP addresses, all this shit. And email capture. Yeah. I found out a lot about some of the people who are in my life. But I play my cards close to my chest. I, I don't tell them. My best friend is like, I don't know how you do it. Because she's like full Old Testament. She's Moses. She wants eye for an eye. She wants to go get them. And I'm like, no. Keep your cards close to your chest and hold, hold, hold. I'm that person. I don't play a game unless I have to, but it's good always to have info. So anytime someone fucks with you online, you would be shocked. It might be your neighbor, some bitch at church. It, there's always someone that you know mixed up in there that would just blow your mind that, you know, they would dedicate their life to hurting you. It's like, gosh. I have old Avon customers and shit that come at me. <laughs> it's insane. Good morning. Did you guys see the president of Penn and the president of Harvard refusing to say that calling for the genocide of Jews is punishable in their college. They refused. They would not say it. And the lady's like, ah, uh, yes or no question. You don't need to give me the gobbledygook. Just yes or no. Is it <clears throat> against the rules of your college to call for the genocide of all Jews? They're like, well, it depends on the context in which they want all Jews to die. <laughs> it's like, what? So, they, I mean... The radical left has been exposed. You are the Nazis. The people that are like punching Nazi in the face and shit, these people are the Nazis. This goes beyond just Israel. And if you want to criticize Israel, Israel, that's fine. But they're attacking Jews in the United States and they're doing it everywhere and just, they don't care. So they were all like, MAGA people are Nazis. No, the, the Tiki Torch boys wish they were this diabolical. They, they didn't even, they just said, you won't overtake us or something. That's all they said. They weren't chanting for the genocide of all Jews in Harvard's like, we support the genocide of all Jews. Chase those Jews in the bathroom, scare every Jewish student. That's what they're doing. But then they said those loser Tiki Torch guys were like, white supremacist. It's like, dude, they all, first off, the Tiki Torch guys would be like, teach us how to be as Jew hating as you, because you guys are definitely hating Jews way more than we do. I mean, they're putting white supremacists to actual shame. And what's funny is, you know, I, I was married to an ethnic Jew, Jewish by blood, right? They're white. They're white. And that's why they're hated. They're white and they're successful. So they're hated. They don't fit that communist Marxist mindset of a uh, minority not doing well for themselves. They're hard workers and they will fucking put the work in. I am telling you, I'm sorry. Like if so, I, I told, I told my husband like many years ago, I'm like, I only feel really deeply comfortable with like a Jewish person touching my money. I'm sorry. Straight up. Like there's things you're good at right? I'm really good at cooking. I'm Italian. That's not an insult to be like, oh man, I'd love a, a Dago in my kitchen. That is not an insult to be strong at something like, oh, Asians are great at math. How is that an insult? That That's a positive thing. <laughs> like someone was like, oh, the NFL are, you know, all black guys. I'm like, yeah, sorry. They kick your ass at sports. Like, clearly they are more gifted full spot stop like you can't argue <laughs> against that because no one's drafting people based on their looks right 
Do you know a sports team that's like, man, we really want diversity hires? That no, they want to win. <laughs> so they're drafting the best people for the job. So they're great at sports. Not an insult. That means you're, you know, you're prone to be an amazing athlete. And what's funny is, you know, Marxists want, want that to be insulting. I'm like, you can't insult. That's like saying women are better at multitasking. Women are better at listening to like four different people speak at once than dudes. That's not an insult. That, it is a gift. <laughs> you know, we all have these gifts. And that's ours, is the gift of the multitask. What's this? Good morning. The key to long-lasting eyeshadow. What is this? Oh, you guys are discussing demolition and blessing. Hi, kitty. Up. Oh. So the dog hates the cats. And the dog hates the cats even more with their stupid demigorgon things on. And then the cats get super lovey and want to go over to the dog. And then, hi, are you sniff? See, here's the thing. When they're sleeping, you go over there and you sniff around. She good girl. And then you sniff around. But then when they walk around, you're terrified of them. So the little things make her even more scared. Good girl. You love that kitty. Santa, I only love them when they're not moving. She's so weird. What a weird dog. I really do love this makeup I did today. Kind of shoddy right here. Hello. Hello, sleeping beauty. I am like asleep at the wheel, kids. Truly, I'm so tired. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, everybody. So their little wee tails go straight up. And that, that's when I know it's dog time. <laughs> when the tails go straight up, they're like, dog? And then dog can't have a moment's peace. She's just walking around because she doesn't like to be touched. This is definitely an autistic man's dog. Can you lay down and not stop backing into my tree? Thank you. Hi. Hi, can I show them little Demi Gorgon? Come here. Come here, sweet little buttercup. So I bought them wee little cat beds that they don't use because they sleep on top of them. Look at her little face. Look at the... Hi. Oh, a little purr bag. She's like, I can't reach these areas. Hi. Hi, little baby. <laughs> I love her. I told Matt, I'm like, I love these cats so much. I can't even. I can't even. You go to sleep. They're so sleepy after their surgery. So sleepy. And I told him, I'm like, Mommy's sorry, but Mommy doesn't need you dropping blood all over the house. She doesn't need Mr. Man spraying urine everywhere. And... It's part of the agreement when you adopt from these small boutique animal rescues, you, you got to spay and neuter. Plus, if you're not going to breed them, it's not a thoroughbred cat. Why would I not spay and neuter them? Like if these were full-blooded, like pedigree Maine Coons and I wanted to like breed them, fine. And you know, I don't like that about breeders requiring someone neuter or spay an animal they're paying you thousands of dollars for? Are you listening, any breeders? Fuck off. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't want competition? Not that many people are going to do it anyway. I, I think it's bullshit for a breeder to charge anyone that much money, which is a ridiculous amount. I don't, uh, Maine Coon cats are like three, four thousand dollars. You're an absurd human being. But to sell them and be like, oh, now you can't breed them like me? Fuck you. That's how I feel about you guys. Fuck you. <laughs> they made Matt do that with his Mastiff, his English Mastiff. And it destroyed his Mastiff's body. Like, he got all these pee problems and everything ever since the neuter. It just went wrong. It, uh, I guess, expedited an issue that was already wrong with his bladder and things down there. It made it worse. And all he did was dribble pee everywhere. And I'm like, dude, that was a stud of a dog. He should have been able to breed if someone wanted... And trust me, not many people want an English Mastiff 
that's like 152 pounds. Trust, they don't. Okay, little eyeliner. What are you guys saying? Um, that was foul. Don't you just love your guy for that? What? I don't know what the fuck locals are talking about. Y'all are just having a conversation with each other. I can't read it because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Hey, hi, hi, what are we doing? As long as it's not chewing on wires. Jesus. Oh, they, they just discovered that they can lick each other's wounds, which is just great for me. <laughs> God, you cats are going to be the death of me. Oh, thank you. This is our Essential Eyes Palette, FMG Cashmere by Avon. It is pretty. It is pretty. All right, let, let us get some eyeliner in here. Little eyeliner, but yeah, I think I'll stream today some cooking. That way I don't have to do it over the weekend. Also, we're on this diet and I start my period on Sunday. Can we just be real? Hey, 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 you two, you guys be nice. You cannot fight like that. They're like, oh, we're going to do everything we're not supposed to do after our surgery. So we can bust open our stitches and you can have a heart attack. Like yesterday, I look over and a stink bug that had gotten in here in the fall had come back to life and it's flying. And I'm like, no, because it's like, Brr, and I see her go, wah, and I mean, eight feet right up in the air and gets it. And I'm like, she is going to split open her stomach. <laughs> this fucking, how do you keep cats from jumping? And everyone's like, oh, put them in your bathroom. They would destroy the woodwork. Are you kidding me? There would be no door or trim. I, you can't confine two, not even adolescent, like they're almost adult cats into a tiny bathroom <laughs> after they've had full reign of the house. And just be like, oh, yeah, so, um, about that. Hi. Little demigorgons. They're so cute. Matt's always trying to bust my balls. You don't love dog. I'm like, that dog doesn't give a shit if I died. If I was dead, laying on the ground, Luna might glance down at me and then step on me to get to her dad. <laughs> <laughs> sorry these cats uh normal adrian duck poop talk we ate brussels sprouts last night no look leafy greens are supposed to be really good for staying off dementia and cancer so i'm always trying to and i mean it's so putrid it's so bad like the result of eating those things almost make it not worth eating them However, they're a superfood and the benefits that they have for your health. I'm like, we gotta do this, dude. We gotta. We gotta. I just finished this morning. I woke up early and I watched the Tucker and Jones interview on X. I hope a lot of people watch that, man. Very informative. You know, I was thinking... Like with that Sandy Hook thing, suing him for saying words. Now it would be wrong, but if they sued the murderer of their children's family and said, well, you took part in this, you raised him and molded him into what he is. And that's why our kids are dead. It doesn't make sense, but it would make more sense than suing some guy that said, oh, it might've been a false flag operation. Like that doesn't make any sense at all it's nonsensical like there's people because they're so stupid who actually thinks that jones was the gunman who killed these children because that's how they treat them it makes no sense like no matter how much i look at it it makes no sense kind of like january 6th they called an insurrection there were no guns nothing the police were like come on like it's all on video we can all see it a couple people smashed some windows totally 
assholes punish them. They're sentencing people to like 30 years for some of that shit. Now, when BLM and the radical left went and toppled guard towers and injured multiple Secret Service members and drove the president into a bunker as they tried to insurrect the White House, which was way more dangerous and they caused way more damage. The news was like, ha, 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 that's funny. Trump's so dumb. We love insurrection against Trump. Ha, ha, everyone make fun of them overthrowing the White House. It's so fun when BLM and Marxist communists overthrow the U.S. government. Ha, 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 and CNN loves that. And I'm like, this is such a two-tier system. And I get it if you're on one side and you're like, oh, I like watching my adversaries be punished. But at a certain point, you have to like, because I did this. I was an atheist watching Christians get punished for worshiping God. And then they're like, go in the streets and riot and burn everything. Ha <laughs> ha, BLM. And I'm like, I'd much rather have Christians go worship God than these people burn down cities. Like, what are you fucking talking about? That's when I started speaking out and everyone hated me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like if a bunch of Mormons want to get together or a bunch of Jews want to go to synagogue, to me, that just seems a million times safer than you allowing these riots where multitudes of people were murdered. Tons of people were murdered in these riots. And they're like, but the riots are good and Christians must be punished. And I'm like, uh, uh, no, 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 no. So when you see, and I, I was not a big fan of Christians at a time because let's be real. It's like 50, 60% of Christians just wear it as an armor while they continue to be pieces of shit. And they're like, oh, I go to church on Sunday and say, gee, Wilker, sorry, I fucked those prostitutes all week. Sorry, Jesus. Anyway, and then they just go and be an asshole again. So I've always had problems. I guess everyone's an asshole and it doesn't matter <laughs> if you're Christian or Muslim, like assholes be assholes, right? So if someone you don't agree with is saying things you don't agree with. You need to defend, because I'm a liberal. I'm a 90s liberal. You need to defend their right to say and do it. But when you give special treatment to communist Marxists to riot in our streets, but not special treatment, which is covered by our Constitution, the right to assemble in your church and stuff, and take that away, that's when I know who our enemies are. And at the point, that time, I was not like the biggest fan of Christians, but I was like, okay, someone needs to speak up. This is nuts. This is insane. So some of you might remember, I'm like streaming and I'm like, dude, I I'm agnostic. I don't believe in God. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. The attack on religious people right now and the worshiping of fucking commie criminals in our streets. This is insane. And that is when everyone turned on me. All my old Hollywood friends, loved ones near and dear to me, the brainwashing that is very apparent that has happened to everyone was just, it was so clear. And I'm like, oh my God. And I started waking up from the matrix and basically learning that everything I ever thought was a fucking lie. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so thanks, Christians. If it wasn't for you being persecuted by the United States government and a bunch of communists who think they have a right to worship skin color and burn down buildings because of it, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have woken up out of the system. So thanks. <laughs> thanks for just wanting to go pray to God. Because I was like, uh-uh. Like, because as an agnostic, I felt safer with Christians going to church than I did all these fucking communists toppling statues and burning down our cities. Like, what the fuck? And the news is like, no, we worship communists. America loves communism. Yes, let the communism spread. Put race above anything, above moral character and integrity. Skin color is what matters the most, your actual skin color. And I'm like, this is... This is the Maoist revolution, but instead of using class, they're using skin color and sexuality. And then I started waking up and boy, do they hate you when, they, when you do. Misery loves company. So all the brainwashed weirdos, they don't want to be alone. 
Like, I used to sit there and be like, I am a, you know, I'm a lefty because, you know, even if I don't agree, look, example, even if I don't agree with homosexuality, and I, I really don't care if you are, but it does nothing for me. Like, I'm not going to seek out a movie with a gay couple, and it's not because I'm a bigot. It just does nothing for me. Nothing. Nothing at all. Like, it doesn't stir anything in my heart to watch a gay love story because I don't identify with that, and that's okay. Like, I'm not like, oh, man, I gotta consume all this lesbian stuff. And it's not like an insult. I'm sure they feel the same way about straight people. I mean, they say it all the time. But, you know, you do you. You do you kind of thing. Even if I don't agree with it. Like, I don't believe in worshiping the Dark Lord. Okay, here's an example. I am anti-abortion, especially for myself. Because my view is it's executing your own offspring. And that is something that I don't think I could ever live with with myself. I am not passing judgment on anyone else. That's your life and you have to answer for everything you do in it, not me. I am very aware that women will be so desperate to terminate their child that they will do some shit to do so. Safe, legal, and rare was my stance forever. Not for me. But, like, I can't enforce people to stop using heroin. They're still going to do it. You know what I mean? I just, that's not a battle I'm going to fight because I, logic, you will lose. And this is why conservatives lose all the time. Because their moral convictions are like, it's fine if we lose all the time as long as we stick with their morality and convictions. But I can't force a Muslim person to believe what I believe in. And it's the same thing. These people don't believe in God and they don't think it's a bad thing to terminate their own children. So how are you going to push your morality and your convictions on someone that doesn't agree with them, right? So I'm like, yo, I don't want my tax money taken from me. I don't want to support this at all. I'm not advocating for your right to do it. I think it's fucked up, but it's going to exist. But up to nine months, like for real? And then I have people, oh, well, that's never going to happen. I'm like, the fact that you're even defending that? My own friend, well, when is that ever going to happen? I'm like, why would that be in the books? Like, if there's a law you can execute your child until they're 12 years old, wouldn't you want to get rid of that? Not that, well, no one's just going to do it. Like, what, what the fuck does that matter? Like, oh, you can have sex with your own daughter? Like, that's a fucked up law. Maybe we should, maybe we should get rid of that one. Um... Oh, you guys are talking about the trial. Okay. Heroin is already legal. Everything's legal. Up is down. Down is up. Good is bad. Bad is good. Men are women and women are men. Everything has lost its mind. <laughs> that is where we're at. We are in clown world. Okay. I think I'm going to put my love at first lash mascara on and try in some way to salvage these poor eyelashes that just look terrible. And I think I will stream making my little venison meatloaf today. Why not? I'm going to mix it with a little beef to try to keep the, the mush together, but I certainly do not want that venison to go wrong. Then I guess Matt and I can have leftovers tomorrow. Ooh, I really did. Just rip out chunks of eyelashes. So this has microfibers in it that um, beef up your eyelashes, which is kind of great. Kind of great when you have eyelashes like mine, which you will see in a moment. That's a difference, isn't it? <laughs> See, that's when I learned, when I started defending conservatives, I was raised, raised as a child to hate Republicans. Full disclosure. As a child. They fuck their own mother and kill their own brother. Evil Republicans. Evil. It was like all the time. It's all I heard. 
all I heard. If there was a family member that was Republican, everyone was like, ah, uh, talk shit about them. Be evil to them. Evil. It, that's what everyone did. And I was part of it. Okay? Full disclosure. Then I realized... You need the yin and yang. You need the balance. Look at what happens when you take away conservatives and it's just the left ruling everything. Everyone's losing their minds. Just like if it was only Republicans ru ruling everything. Everyone's losing their minds. Also, there shouldn't be a two-party system. And the fact that we keep making excuses of why there is shows how brainwashed we are. There just shouldn't be. I don't hate people for the way they vote. I think that's disgusting. I think our leader right now is a disgusting human being, just vile, the worst of the worst, and completely demented. But I don't judge and hate someone for voting for him, especially when you have the news brainwashing everybody that the other guy's a dictator, even though he lived through four years of him not dictating in any way. We're going to make believe it was like Hitler. Oh my God. I was Democrat the whole time Trump was in office. And I remember at the end of it, my gay conservative cousin going, well, did you die? <laughs> I was like, no. I just heard people going, kids in cages, kids in cages. And it's like, well, now Biden's sex trafficking. <laughs> I hope that a bunch of old people buy them and have sex with them. It's fine when Joe Biden does it. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> he puts them on planes at two in the morning and loses children all over the United States. Like... It's caught on camera. Oh, but that's good because it's my side, so it's so good. That's where everyone's mentally ill. Hold your own side accountable, guys. Otherwise, people who are awake, like me, just look at you and go, this poor mentally ill person can't even hold their own side of account. Let's say my husband did something terrible, and I'm like, well, your husband did this. That's what people do. No one's talking about their husband. They're bringing up that my husband did something terrible. Like the deflection shit? What are you, two years old? Put it down. Make a mental note of it that you want to fight about that later. And instead of he said, she said, and they did, and you did. If someone goes, this mascara is a pedophile. Like, where's your evidence? Well, here it is. Well, instead of saying, well, you know pedophiles, maybe I'll focus on this one pedophile. I'm like, yeah, man. They're not on my, get the, go away. But that's not what they do. That's what, that's how I know everyone's under mind control. I know it. Turning on their own families, turning on their own friends, talking down to them, being mean, like something's wrong, man. Something's wrong. Sick. Truly is sick. A politician that wouldn't, wouldn't do anything with you other than wipe their ass after having diarrhea. And people are willing to shun their loved ones over it. Over lies, they tell us. Lies. <laughs> That's all they do. Is lie. Well, it's the lesser of two evils. Dude, let me, let me teach you something. And this is what I learned as a former Democrat. It is the sociopaths that pretend they're doing good, that pretend they care about the environment, that pretend they care about children, that pretend they care about gays, that pretend we've all dated or known a sociopath. The worst ones are the ones that convince you that they fucking care. They're the most evil. Seriously. I can look back at people I dated and it was the ones where all my friends were like, oh, he's so wonderful, everything. He's just so what And then it's like fucking Jeffrey Dahmer. It's like John Wayne Gacy was a politician. He was a star in his community. He performed for sick and dying children in hospitals and horrifically murdered men in his house and buried them in his basement. So when you're like, oh, but Nancy Pelosi loves the gays. No, she doesn't. They, the one side doesn't love the gays. And that is what woke me up. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> They're all sociopaths. Some are more covert. Some are more overt. But the covert ones gotten people believing they care about human rights and shit. Like, whoa, dude. Those are the most dangerous ones. 
<laughs> we love the people. Yeah, right. I am enjoying watching Chicago, like, have a nervous breakdown about all the migrant camps. And then the migrants are like, there's no TV here. We need more stuff. It's a bunch of socialists wanting your money to buy them shit. And then they're complaining about it. They break in here illegally. They're illegal human beings, criminals in our country. And then they're like, well, we want free food and free TV and free, free, free. I say we take our military, we put them on the border since Iran's mad at us and stuff, and we don't allow terrorists to come in who are going to attack us, and then the government's going to be like, ooh, no one saw that coming. Now we have to take more rights from the people. Like, what? No. No. Okay. Where is... There it is. I'm going to use... My vitamin C aluminum. Thank God for this mascara. I'm not going to put any in my bottom, but thank God for that. With venison, provolone, cheese. No cheese. We're on a diet. Yeah. So unless it's a splurge day, I don't add extra calories to our shit. I just don't do it. There's no reason. Like, I... Either I'm going to fucking feast and I'm going to have pieces of cake with pizza... Or, like, Italian sausage uh, pasta and, like, homemade bread and shit. Okay, I'll eat those calories. But when you give me a lean meat like venison and we're not having cake and we're not eating cookies, like, I'm just going to keep it as healthy as possible because it's, like, annoying. Dude, Roseanne. I love Roseanne. I love that bitch. She's fucking nuts. What is it? Brilliance is on the brink of madness. She's one of those. <laughs> She's one of those. What a pioneer that woman is. Truly. A pioneer. It's so funny because I I hate the whole, I want to be seen. This is the vi vitamin C illuminating uh, priming moisturizer, by the way. And I had a friend who is overweight, like, I never felt seen, I never felt represented, I'm like, what? Well, you know, in the 90s, there weren't this and that, I'm like, in the 1990s, Roseanne Barr was the biggest star in the world. A fat, funny woman who was not what you would consider a 10, was the reigning queen of planet fucking Earth. And you're going to tell me you didn't feel seen or represented. You're lying. That's what you're doing. It wasn't Cindy Crawford wasn't the number one reigning queen of TV. No. Mm -hmm. No. Was it Sandra Bullock? Oh, no, no. It wasn't her either. It was a fat, mediocre looking woman who not only ruled the world, she ruled the airwaves, and she laid waste to all the men in her field and did better than all of them. That's why, well, we can't be successful because of the patriarchy. Roseanne Barr wipes her ass with your stupid beliefs. It's so dumb. It just, it truly is dumb. It truly is. Truly. Insane. Insane. Yeah. I love Roseanne. Sleeping in the lobbies of police stations? Dude, they all need to be deported. I'm sorry. Go home. If I just broke into a country and I wasn't being prosecuted, I'm just there because I know that the government are criminals. Our government right now are criminals. Federal government are criminals. They're breaking multitudes of federal laws right now, allowing these people to pour in our country. They are fucking criminals. They're worse than the January 6th people. They are performing an insurrection of the American people every single day. Every single day. That's, that's worse than a couple people mad breaking windows for a few hours. Are you fucking kidding me? There's a full-on invasion at our borders, and right now the whole world hates us and is probably plotting our demise and we just have the door open. <coughs> Come on in. Come fuck with us. 
I'm old enough to remember 9-11, which I'm sure they let that happen too. Like, sorry, I don't want to be fucked with. All right, match wand. This is in coconut. I'll do a squiggly. A squiggly. A squiggly. Just some squiggles. That's what I call my cats when they don't want to be in my lap anymore. I'm like, oh, commence squiggling. <laughs> we have to be out of here. And my skin is sloughing off a little bit. But that's okay because I have tons of moisture under this. It is from my Retinol 1% Serum. I put it on all the time, guys. Full disclosure. Your skin will peel. But, you know, you'll look beautiful. So, gelato. Color correcting. A little brightness under them eyes. There we go. Peeling the most over here. <laughs> okay. 332 people in here and you're not talking. Am I crazy? It has been the same chat on my screen now. I feel like for four minutes. Maybe five. Is this broken? Are you guys just really just like, I don't know, doing laundry? <laughs> Driving? I mean, my locals chat is going, man. I'm reading what you guys are writing. That shit is just flying. Y'all got shit you gotta say and nothing stopping you from saying it. But man, my Facebook is, it says me too, lol, it was off the hook. And it's just been there forever. Hello? I see hearts. I don't see nobody saying shit. Am I crazy? Like, <laughs> hello? Is anybody out there? I feel like Pinky from Pink Floyd's Wall. Am I crazy? Because still, even now, no one's like, hey, we're here. Hey, I'm saying things. Nothing. It's just, okay, Heidi Whitman. One person has said hello. Okay, so it's not my, my phone is just not working, right? Okay, my phone is just not working. All right. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. I was like, am I fucking crazy? Like, one out of 90 of your messages are coming through to me on my phone. So there's that. A little blushing nude stick blush. Don't mind if I do. I love, I love creams. The older I get, the more I just want creams on my face. Cre uh, 250 stars I saw. Pat Brookbank. You know, I saw your name, and all I could think of is, it's Pat. Yeah, n no, bro. N no, you're blocked. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you won a Honda Civic. Didn't we learn anything with Oprah? It's considered income. Here's what I don't get. So the government has stolen all our money and money laundered it in wars. We are trillions, tens upon tens of trillions of dollars in debt. Yet every year, if you are in debt with your taxes, if you do something wrong, you're going to go to jail and get in trouble. But not them. Don't you feel like we just live in this system where the elites get to do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want, right? Like anyone else would be fired. Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Bernie Sanders. Stephanie, thank you so much for the 310 stars. These people have been part of our government forever. Well, our government has clearly failed. How have they kept their jobs? Does that make sense? How do you keep your fucking job when you've done nothing but fail? I guess it's kind of like Disney. You know, all those people fail every single year in making anything entertaining anymore because it's all like activism. Stephanie Stewart de Kunha. De Kunha. Okay. 
Okay, so Facebook is having trouble, but you guys are still here, so I appreciate you. Just so you know, I appreciate you. Till December 13th, at 1230 p.m., you can order Avon. I would not wait last minute. Don't don't wait last minute. Let's use the highbrow eyebrow gel and, and clear. Let's tame those beasts. I wonder when I go through menopause if I'm going to lose my eyebrows. And everyone's going to be like, what happened? And I'll be like, I'm old. Old. Heidi. Elizabeth. Well, thank you, you guys. You guys should have said something in your little stars sending. <laughs> so I can see what you're saying. Newt Gingrich was the top. It's been that way. I remember politician bounce check scandal in the 90s where these politicians were passing bad checks. Dude, our politicians are thieves. They just rob us blind and then blame us. And if we get mad, they're like, you're bad. Go to prison. We're here. Facebook isn't playing nice with chat. Good morning. Good morning, Trisha. I was like, maybe there's only like five people here and I'm boring. I don't know. I'm like, usually y'all have something to say. Like, I'll say something, and you're like, yeah, or no, I don't agree with you. That's a dumb idea. Shit happens. Okay. So, now I'm going to use the Glow Color Hybrid Face Mist to set my makeup. There we go. Yeah, I think I will stream today. Get it out of the way for the weekend. Why not? You know? Why not? Nice. Nice. I mean, y'all just sent me a bunch of money. I guess Facebook should just screw up all the time, right? Uh, Natasha, hey, keep fucking up, Mark Zuckerberg. Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> Everyone's like, Zuckerberg really screwed up, so we're going to send you money. <laughs> I'm lying to you. I actually see all your comments. Wouldn't that be funny? Well, not funny. It'd be cruel. This is on final sale right now in my store. It's the Isinox a new uh, lip lip butter in it. I love this shit. I I just don't understand why we're getting rid of it. But if it's on mega sale, might as well go in there and get it. Know what I mean? Ah. <sighs> Because their voter base keeps getting money, taxpayer. Dude, I'm just, I'm so tired of everything. I'm so tired of everything. Like, at the end of the year when I pay my taxes, because they don't hold my taxes with each check because I'm a corporation. So I have to have an account where it accumulates over time, I have to be responsible. Do you know how hard it is sometimes when you're really in need and you look and you're like, oh my God, the money that Uncle Sam's going to steal from me to send to Ukraine and not do anything for us. It's all there. I could use that. I could use that. I could flip my kitchen. I could fucking have new flooring in here. We could build a garage. There's so much that would be better in my life. If I wasn't robbed blind every fucking year and see nothing for it. Now, if all the roads were pristine, if the cities were amazing, if the police arrested criminals, if the internet wasn't full of videos of people shoplifting everything, Kim Underhill Potter, thank you very much. And Merry Christmas to you. Then fine, but that is just not, that is not what happens with our money. So it's hard. Because right now I've got a little chunk there. And I'm like, dude, like my belt is so tight this holiday season. Thank you, Karen, for the stars. <laughs> Everyone's belt is super tight this holiday season. Like I've had to tell friends, I'm like, please don't send me anything because I can't send you anything. Full stop. Don't send me anything because I ain't sending you anything and I'm just going to feel bad. Uh, one of my friends was like, you know, she just had a new baby, little tiny teeny baby. She's like, we're just going to wrap things that she already has because she doesn't know she's a baby. <laughs> she's like, we just want to take pictures of like the first Christmas morning. I'm like, so wait a minute. You're calling me because you're rewrapping the baby's presents 
because the baby doesn't know and you feel bad and you're sussing it out if I'm sending you anything. I'm like, send me a card. I'm like, write something beautiful on that card. I'm like, I love you. I keep all her cards to me. Because I'm like, if anything ever happens to my friend, I have all these memories. Karen, y'all are crazy. Thank you for all the stars. I will read everything off. And I'm like, dude, this holiday season... I have given gifts of things people need. There's no just like special amazing thing. My husband needed money to be able to fly to continue his certification for Maine. And as much as I wanted to keep that flight voucher from COVID for myself so that I could go and do what I wanted to do and see my family and stuff, I was like, this is a gift from God. The fact that United's going to let me give this voucher to him because of when it happened. That is an answer to prayer. Having fun, happy time that's just play for me or having him go get his certification, which is, you know, for his job. These are immensely different things. So there was like a little selfish nugget in me that was like, but I want to go see my friends and my family. Like it was there. But then I was like, my husband's trying to get educated to start a new job so that he can have a happy life. Like, voiceover, he was so miserable, you guys. The poor guy was so fucking miserable. Like, I, and I get it. I've been in Hollywood. You can't be that miserable with your job. You are beautiful. I saw that. Well... Okay, so this year I did Christmas cards for $80 or more in my store. If you sub to my page in a year's time, it doesn't even hit $80. Does that make sense? So I've always made it really clear that if you shop in my stores, I'll send you a card. I've never offered cards to subscribers because I have to go out and I have to buy all the little stamps. And then I have to pay the designer to design the card. Then I have to print the cards and then I have to get all the envelopes. <laughs> Whee! So everything costs money, right? I don't need material goods for my loved ones. Can't take them with me. And then that's what I'm talking about. But <clears throat> a flight to Maine helps him get certified fully as a Maine guide. So that's a big deal. It's a huge deal. So I... I can give that gift that I so selfishly wish I could keep for myself to see friends and family, but I can give that gift to him. Angelina Jolie is saying Hollywood is toxic and leaving. That chick. When you work in the industry and you work with makeup artists and caterers and all these people, they all know each other. There are lots of stories about her and they are not nice. It is not about what a nice chick she is. Jennifer Aniston, completely different. I will tell you, everyone says she's really nice. Straight up. They're like, she's really nice. So I'll give you that. If you're like a Jennifer Aniston fan, people will like her. You know, a little stuck up, but not a complete asshole to everybody. Angelina Jolie does not have a great representation or uh, reputation in Hollywood for being this amazing She's considered toxic, so. I still love her acting and everything. I really don't give a shit what she does in her life, you know. I'm that kind of person. That's why if I was an actress or an actor like Chris Evans or Mark Rufio, like, and they're like, I'm an activist, politics, Trump. I'm like, shut the fuck up, you idiot. How dumb are you? Like, nobody gives a shit what I believe in over here because I'm not doing any of this. But it, it, that's why Tom Cruise is the shit. He is not trying to convert you to Scientology. He doesn't give a shit. He's like, fuck you. <laughs> I make movies. And you're like, what's going on in his life? He's like, you don't need to know. Fuck you. And I'm like, that's exactly what we need in celebrities. Tom Cruise doesn't come out telling us who to vote for or screaming about kids in cages and he doesn't go out and fucking picket 
with writer's strikes or anything like that. He's like, nope, I want people to come to my movies. I want them to come to my movies. That You know what I want? I want people to enjoy me and not hate me. Dude's smart. <laughs> Dude is smart. Guys, my old man right now is streaming on Twitch. I'm going to go and watch his stream if you guys would like to join me. Ooh, he has 410 people. Imagine if I could get you guys to go and watch him for Christmas. Will you come watch my husband with me? I'll post his link. He has the most beautiful voice ever, and he makes me laugh. I love my husband. He loves me. Uh, I will see some of you guys on Monday. I think today, around 1 or 2, I'll do a cooking stream. Uh, I have a pampered uh, chef thing that's open if you guys want to shop there, by all means. Um, I close that on Sunday. So if you want your discount and stuff through it, it closes Sunday. Don't wait until last minute. I I don't understand the last minuteers. Well, I was waiting until the last possible moment. People do this shit to my husband is this way. I'm like, okay, there's an ice cream truck. It's here for three days. Well, I'm going to wait for the third day. In the last 15 minutes <laughs> to go find that ice cream truck. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm there 15 minutes before they fucking open day one. In line. That's me. Post office? It's a little crowded? Okay. I'm already in line 10 minutes before they lift the gate to get in there to send my package. Then your ass, Mr. Procrastination, you go waltzing in there. And then you're like, oh, gee, I don't know why this line is 45 minutes. Uh, I do. Because you're a procrastinator. And you waited until you fucked yourself over. <laughs> so don't wait on holiday shipping. Don't wait to go to your post office. Don't wait to go to Costco. Stop waiting. How do you live like this? What are you waiting for? I just wanted to make sure I was fucked over in the most I could be. I, I really wanted to complicate my life to the point where I could hardly breathe. So I figured if I just fucked around, I'd find out. Why? I, I mean, I've had these conversations with friends. I will not rely on friends to drive me anywhere anymore. I had my one friend laughing till she was crying. I'm like, my life is shit because of you. Because I had to rely on an unreliable person, and now we don't know if we're going to get this thing that I need more than anything, which you assured me we'd get. But then because you, for some reason, were like, well, gee, wouldn't it be more fun to see if I could destroy everything? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And she, she's like, I cannot drive or focus. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going to shut up. Because I'm over here, my stomach is flipping, my throat is closing up, the anxiety I feel, like I feel my heartbeat in my cheeks, I am so wigged out, and it's all because of you, I, and I don't want you to feel bad, but like someone needs to tell you everything's going wrong because of you, not you are involved in a day where everything's going wrong. No, your whole fucking plotting of decisions got us to this point where I, your friend, have to tell you you're fucking my life up. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, my friends are like, oh, there's a concert and we got to be there at 7 and blah, blah, blah. And I show up and they're like, oh, my God, you're here at 530. I'm like, I'm not fighting throngs of people to sit in our seats Six songs in because you think we have time for you to dusty yourself up. No one's looking at you. Who here at this concert gives a shit that you exist? Let show of hands. That's right. No one fucking cares what your hair looks like. Everyone's going to be holding up their phone and taping the stage. No one cares what color lipstick you're wearing. You guys don't want to be my friend. You have no idea. <laughs> So then I'm sitting there in the door frame. I'm like, gee, I'm so glad I got here in time so you could fuck up our life. Isn't that great? Oh, I'm sure when we're trying to make it to our seats seven songs in, halfway through the concert, everyone's going to be like, that lip color was worth it, girl. All of them. 
or when we miss the whole concert because we can't find parking because you had to have curls in your hair that no one's going to notice. Oh, were you off work today? That's cool. So you waited all day until five minutes before I got here to do all this bullshit that is meaningless. <laughs> and I'll just keep going. I can't finish my hair. I'm laughing so. I'm like, good. Good. Because the night's ruined. And I'm certainly not going to shut up to make you more comfortable through it. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Waste our money on concert tickets? And now the whole night's going to be parking and walking through bodies of people and not enjoying ourselves at all because you, you, you are an asshole that doesn't have your shit together. And then everyone's like, why won't you drive with us anymore? I'm like, oh, gee, I'm sorry. How many times are you going to ruin my life to where I learn? Like, you think I'm ever getting in a car with you again? Absolutely fucking not. I would rather go early and not risk everyone's life bobbing and weaving through traffic, giving everyone brain aneurysms out of fear. Because I had to put lippy stick on. Like, get, get fucked. <laughs> I'm always surprised I have friends anymore. Dude, the filter is gone. I'm 41. It's 7.24 in the morning on a fucking Friday. It's 12.08. The filter is done. I'm done. I am so done. And it's beautiful. And I love it. And I do make... Certain friends of mine, man, they got a spine. They can take it. They can take it. I love it. Like, my friend right now, I'm so proud of her. She's lost so much weight. I'm so proud of her. She's going to live. She's going to live. That's all I care about. Because, you know, when they're like, oh, uh, body positivity, all this shit. Okay. At a certain age, it comes for you. And she had heart issues and was like almost a borderline. So it was so bad and I was so scared because I love her so fucking much that my life will be shit without her here. I told her, if you die in a preventable way in front of your fucking children, I'm going to run up and I'm going to kick your damn casket right over and your body's just going to flop out and I'm going to be like, bitch! Just like you could have made it in the concert in time, you could have not died. You had how long to make sure you didn't die and then you procrastinate until the very end, I'm scared of and then you're dead and then I'm supposed to feel bad? No. I'm kicking your coffin over. I'm so mad. <laughs> anyway. She'd be like, I just try and I try and I don't lose weight. And I'm like, no, you don't. You're like sneak eating, dude. You don't try. You're eating too many calories. And now that she's like killing it, she's like, oh, man, I was sneak eating. I'm like, oh, gee, no one knew. <laughs> like, just live for me, bitch. Live. That's all I want. <sighs> all right. I want to thank Karen S. Hall. Kim Underhill Potter, Natasha Louise Helen Grant, what a name, girl, Trisha Lynn, Elizabeth Tuffo or Tufo, Heidi Whitman, Stephanie Stewart de Kuna, Kuna, Kunha, Kunha, <laughs> and Pat Burkbank. Guys, thank you for the stars. I am going to ask you if you guys would like to join me and hang out with my husband. Here is his link. Um, goodbye, Facebook. I'll see you guys later today. I'm going to make some venison meatloaf.